Welcome to another episode of the Cannabis Review. I am delighted to be joined in this show by Yona Simerman. Yona, how are you keeping today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much. So you've been in the news a lot over the last week or two. Can you kind of give everybody a little overview of how you got to co-founding Tech for Can and your journey in the cannabis industry? Sure. So I'm actually originally Canadian. Um, but I've been living in Israel for over 30 years. Uh, my entire career has been in the Israeli uh, tech ecosystem. So I worked for a couple of high tech companies. Then I ran my own uh, agency doing strategic marketing for Israeli tech companies. I ran that for 12 years. Uh, then I got into the medical cannabis space, honestly, because I was just looking for something interesting. And you know, this was 2017, 2018, and the cannabis industry was everywhere and booming. So I opened a business development company with a partner in Canada, and we were bringing over Israeli cannabis technologies to the Canadian market. So we would do their commercialization strategies, uh, you know, make sure they were able to overcome any regulatory hurdles. Um, and when they were ready, we would introduce them to either investors or licensed producers or extraction companies for either raising capital or joint ventures, licensing agreements, et cetera. Um, and then Corona hit. <laughs> um, and essentially what we're doing now is we're setting up Europe's first medical cannabis tech accelerator. Uh, it's headquartered and funded uh, by Malta Enterprise, which is like the innovation authority of the Maltese government. Um, and we're looking to support early stage entrepreneurs in the cannabis industry. Um, we're talking about IP based technologies that actually solve uh, a need in the industry. Um, so we're not looking at brands. And as I said, it's a very early stage companies. Um, so we're really looking to support them and help them build their company so that they can access the tremendous, you know, European market. Um, we're talking specifically about medical cannabis, not recreational or adult use. Um, and like I said, we're looking specifically at intellectual property um, and companies that have something unique um, to the industry. Okay, that kind of brings me on to the first topic of conversation is what is tech for can? You know, you answered a good bit of it there. Is there a, mm -hmm. is this a short, medium or long term strategy? How hard was it to get the Maltese enterprise uh, government on board? Yeah, so I mean, the way we saw it is that, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019, there was this huge boom in the cannabis industry, but all the investment money was going to cultivation. Um, and we understand that in order for this to be a, you know, continuing to be a long-term growing dynamic industry, we have to we have to make sure that we're providing products and, and processes and solutions that are safe and they're cost effective and they're clinically validated and they're sustainable. Um, ultimately to that, we're bringing products to more patients and educating both patients and physicians that they can benefit from these, this amazing plant. Um, really what we're seeing is that, you know, the barriers of entry for the cannabis industry to biotech, to large pharma, to the high tech sectors, those are challenges that we need to overcome. So whether that's, you know, producing stable products at scale or reducing operational costs, um, validating biopharmaceutical products for specific indications, digital health solutions, across the board, there is room for improvement for the industry and that is what Tech for Can is doing. So essentially what we're doing is we are, it's a short term program, it's 12 weeks, it's a 12 week cohort that during that cohort, um, the companies get funding, they get a mentorship program and a curriculum, they get com uh, commercial services provided by leading financial bodies. Um, so that will help them with any legal questions, marketing, financial projections, regulatory uh, issues that they may have. But the real kicker here and what makes it special and different than any other accelerator is that entrepreneurs who join us get to do a validation pilot or a feasibility study or a proof of concept in an EU GMP licensed facility. So they're already able within the three months of the cohort to move forward either with proof of concept or commercialization milestones. So essentially the, the startup just by joining the cohort, just by completing the cohort, essentially increases their valuation. And at the end of the cohort, they we we will write up like a POC report for our investors, and then investors can then uh, continue in, in ongoing rounds directly to the startups. Um, so we're really, I mean, we use the word accelerator and not incubator because it's it's short and intensive with concrete steps to bringing these products to market. 
Um, and then, and because they're already partnering with a licensed producer that's EU GMP, that's a potential partner or customer. So at the end of the cohort, they may even be at a position where they're ready for a joint venture. Um, and uh, obviously we chose Malta, not only because of its access to mainland Europe, but it already has EU GMP certified production, which we don't really have in Israel. Um, the country, ha the government has declared that they want to be the medical cannabis capital of Europe. They've invested 110 million euro in a designated industrial area. Um, they have a, a lot of the leading Canadian companies um, are setting up in Malta, setting up operations in Malta in order to access mainland Europe. So those are our natural partners. And finally, the whole situation with COVID, I mean, you know, in Israel, we're 60% vaccinated, we can travel. Malta is a small island that hasn't been hit hard by COVID. So the expectation is that we'll be able to have in-person cohorts. Um, although, you know, some entrepreneurs will choose to do the curriculum virtually, that's fine, but they're guaranteed a spot to do the pilot in the EU GMP facility. Okay, amazing. <laughs> Lots of exciting things happening in Malta at the moment. We were talking to the guys yeah. from Materia Ventures as well. So sure. I, I kind of see that Malta and Ireland, both with the kind of beneficial tax rate, are going to be the kind of two dominant spaces kind of pivoting towards servicing the medical cannabis industry and then further down the road, the recreational industry, because that will follow at some stage sure. sooner or later. So. It, yeah, it's an interesting space to be. The next topic I wanted to talk to you about is there's a lot of startups coming into the industry now at the moment. Everybody's looking to raise capital. A lot of the institutional investors won't be touching it as of yet until all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. If you were yeah. set up a cannabis startup anywhere in the world, what city would you pick? Wow. Um, it's a good question. What city would I pick? I would... Um, it really depends what you're doing, I think. I'll tell you what our cha the challenges that we found. Um, uh, we found that there's a lot of money in Europe right now. Um, people aren't looking for the early stage startups, though. So, you know, most startups need, you know, $200,000, $250,000 in order to make their next step. And most of the investors are looking for much larger tickets, which is why the accelerator is a good is a good place because the entrepreneurs get the funding that they need, but the investors are essentially investing in this, this platform, this portfolio, this diversified portfolio that we're offering them. Um, I would say that what we found is that in the US, there is huge money, but a lot of it is going to brands, um, which is not what we're interested in. They're not looking yet at the early stage technologies. Um, and, so there, there just seems to be a lot of money in Europe right now um, for the cannabis industry. And you're right that the institutional investors are being very careful and very wary, but it's coming. It's happening. So I would say that if you're in the real medis medical cannabis, Europe's your place. If you're looking for recreational or adult use, then, yeah, you're probably better off with North American investors. Do you tell me this now, do you see a case of where the growers and farmers in Europe are end up producing, let's say we go 10 years down the line, REC is, is legal in Europe as well as it is in North America. Do you see Europe having the, the more superior, let's say, brands and growers like they do with wine or champagne or a number of different products like chocolate? Or do you see South America then being the low cost alternative that pumps into North America because it's all about margins and profits at the end of the day? So. Yeah, I think looking 10 years down the line, that's what we're looking at. So, you know, high quality pharmaceutical grade cannabis will come from whether it's South America or Africa. Um, I absolutely see that happening, but it's it's going to take a while. Um, and also some countries, you know, let's say Germany or whatever, are only going to allow homegrown, locally home, locally grown cannabis production. So I think ultimately it's a, it's a decision about money and taxes, you know, as long as it's worth their while to cultivate in France or Germany or whatever, then great. But once we have these more sophisticated products and we've a, we're able to have plant stability at scale, um, then it will go commodity, I believe. Yeah. I mean, some countries will probably keep their own growth for like, um, um, uh, really, really high-end products, 
Um, but yeah, I, I think, think it's a strong commodity. You could have it just like the liquor. You could have it like liquor, whereas again, the bottle of vodka over in Europe is 80 euro and it, 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 you've got a, a similar kind of cheaper bottle on sale in different parts of the world. So hopefully the, the premium growers and the guys with the real knowledge of the plant end up being the ones who can profit from the European industry. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was Israel had become a world leader in the R&D side of medical mm -hmm. cannabis. What were the steps that got them there? Was it Professor uh, Raphael uh, or was it a couple of other steps, do you think? Yeah, so Israel's an interesting story. I mean, we've been doing research on medical cannabis longer than anyone else. Like you said, Raphael Meshulam has been doing this since like the 1960s. He's the one who isolated THC. Um, and he's now 90 something years old and he still goes to his lab and he still does work and he's still doing research. And all the universities in Israel have um, uh, like cannabis curriculums now. Um, and so in terms of Israel, look, Israel made the desert bloom for many, many. We, we are the startup nation specifically in ag tech and, and other relevant technologies. Um, cannabis is no different. Where Israel, I think, missed its opportunity, Israel has had a short opportunity to be a leading supplier of high quality cannabis. You know, we've got 350 days of sunshine a year. We've got the technology. We've grown tomatoes in the desert um, and companies are now applying that to cannabis. The problem is that due to regulatory concerns, we, can know, we can't export. So ironically, Israel is, might be growing the best cannabis and might be having the best technologies, but we're also right now the largest importer in the world because for regulatory reasons, we can't export yet. Now that's, that's, that is happening. Um, and you know we've had four elections over two years. So we're looking for, for, for political stability and then being able to provide for the local market and then companies will be able to export. Having said that, all the largest cannabis producers do already have offtake agreements to Europe and North America. They're just waiting for the sort of stamp of approval. Yeah. Where I do see that Israel has a tremendous opportunity is in the uh, technology sector. Like I said, uh, we're the startup nation. Uh, a lot of people are applying their incredible knowledge and innovative spirit to the cannabis industry. I think there's a lot to look at here. Um, a lot of spin-offs from existing ag tech technologies for the cannabis market. Um, and it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting what's going on here. I will say, however, that, you know, in the past week, since we've just, we just issued a press release on, on Tech for Cat once, and we've received submissions from entrepreneurs around the world, from India, from Africa, from Portugal, from Germany, from, I mean, really incredible stuff that's going on. And these are, you know, young entrepreneurs who have their startups, who are looking to get into it, but they also have expertise that, um, that will, you know, help us achieve exactly what we were talking about in terms of the stability and the safety and and the the wide access to this amazing plant. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there who are going to either leave engineering or leave architecture who've got business ideas in their mind and just waiting for the capital to be able to grow their ideas. So, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Yona. If anybody wants to check out Tech for Can, the website's down below. I'd highly it's recommend. It's actually Tech for Can EU. I'm sorry to to. Correct you? Okay. Tech this for Can for, EU? Yeah. So there's a techforcan.com website. So maybe, sorry, the apologies on that. Mm -hmm. So, so Tech for Can EU is, is, it's fine. It's just a, uh, it's the portfolio company of my business partner. Um, it's separate than the accelerator. So the accelerator is Tech for Can Europe.com or Tech for Can EU.com. That's the website. Okay, perfect. I'll okay, have perfect. that up for you now. And yeah, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's much appreciated. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, everybody, have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next show. Bye bye.